Good morning, darling. I am Jolie Gabor, and I am so happy to be talking to you. Now, if you don't know who I am, I was a great socialite. I was a jewelry designer. I was a businesswoman. But I am best known for being the mother, the momager of Ava, Zaza, and Magna Gabor. The four of us together were known as the blonde bombshells from Bulgaria. Oh, there was never any such beautiful women as we were when we were in a group. And I did come to Ridgefield in the 60s and 70s. I lived first on Oscalita and then on Peaceable Ridge. Well, my family goes way back to the Ukraine. Oh, we were Jewish. We went through the Holocaust. One of my relatives was Tom Lanktos. He was the only Holocaust survivor that ever was in the U.S. Senate. Oh, we were so proud of him. Well, my mother and father, they came to Hungary and oh, my father opened up the Diamond House. It was an amazing jewelry store with jewels and porcelain and crystals. I loved my father's store and I worked there all the time with him. Well, when was I born? Um, I don't know. Women my age don't like to talk about that. Some say 1900, some say 1905, some say in the late 1800s. I'm not sure. Well, as you can see, there were three daughters and I was the last one. So when I was born, my father was not thrilled. He wanted a boy and it was going to call him John. So he called me Johnka. Ooh, I hated that name, Johnka. So therefore, later on, I changed it to Jolie. I thought that sounded so much better. All I wanted to do in my life was be an actress. Well, it was only in one movie, but my daughters fulfilled my dream. My parents said, no, 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 no. You're going to finishing school in Switzerland. So that's what I did. And when I came back, no, 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 no. You're not going in the theater. You are going to get married, raise a family. So they found Vilmar Gabor for me. Oh, he was twice my age. He was very sweet. He was very nice, but I certainly never loved him. Well, after six months, I was going to divorce him. And then I found, oh my goodness, I'm pregnant. I can't divorce him now. So Magda came along. And I figured I would give her time with her father. And then I was going to divorce him. And oh, Ava came along and I could not divorce him. She needed a father as well. Well, after six more months, I was going to divorce him and uh, I was pregnant again and Zaza came. So it was 20 years before I was actually able to divorce him. But he was still my friend and he was the man who fathered my beautiful daughters. Well, in the 30s, they had a Miss Hungary contest. Well, I certainly wasn't a Miss. I had three kids and I was married. But I went into the Miss Hungary contest. And oh, I won. Well, shortly after that, we could no longer stay in Hungary. Because of the war, we had to move and we found that we had an outlet through Magda, we could go to Portugal. So we went to Portugal at that time. And luckily, Zaza had gotten to New York City. She met Conrad Hilton and they married and she was able to bring over the rest of the family. I came over with a hundred dollars and a diamond ring. That's all I was left with anyway. 
the wonderful Conrad, he saw I could design jewelry, that I knew jewelry, I had worked in the business, and he set me up in New York City. Oh, I was gorgeous. My daughters were gorgeous. Maria Callas's mother worked in the store. Opera people were coming to the store. Oh, we had celebrity after celebrity. The store was so successful. Even dope another store in Palm Beach. Oh, my life was so busy with benefits and the theater and luncheons. I was the socialite of all times. What a life I had. I decided it was time to marry again. Well, this time I married Howard Christman, a very well-known restaurateur in New York City. Well, this was a very bad decision. The marriage only lasted a year. Well, people count, I never really counted, but they said between myself, I married three times, and my daughters, there were 21 marriages. Now, some of my daughters, they married the same man twice. And George Sanders married two of them. Oh, and then he wanted to marry me. And I said, George, enough of the Gabor family. But I did star in a movie with him. Well, anyway, life was so busy. I had homes in Palm Beach. I had homes all over uh, in the Hempsteads and all, but they were all social and paparazzi and people following me around. I wanted a place to rest, to be quiet, where people wouldn't bother me. And I came to Ridgefield. It was a great suggestion. And first of all, I moved to Oscalita. Not a great house, but I loved to do things where I took something from nothing. And I took this house, and I guess you would say I flipped it. I made a lot of money. I went to Peaceable Ridge. <gasps> Peaceable Ridge, oh, the view was absolutely gorgeous. And again, I took this house and I made it into a magnificent house. Well, after I left in the 70s, they tore it down and they made even a more magnificent house. But I love my time in Ridgefield. My daughters and I would come and do lunch and nobody bothered us, nobody cared that Jolie Gabor lived in Ridgefield. Well, after that, I decided it was time to marry again and I married Count Odin de Zegedy. Oh, he was royalty, he had money, he was handsome, he was romantic. Mo more could I ever want. And I stayed married to him longer than I did to really anyone else. Well, now, later on in my life, what did I do? I continued with my business to some degree, but I began to write books. Oh, I decided people need to know about my life. So I wrote a book about about my life, and boy, I didn't spare any details. I told everything about my life. There were other books written about the Gabors and the wonderful Gabor family. And then I also wrote a Hungarian cookbook, and boy, that ended up being a bestseller. Well, after all my book publishing, I was asked, on many occasions on the Mike Douglas show. Oh, he was so much fun and became such a good friend. I went on the Colgate Comedy Hour and I was also on What's My Line and my movie role with George Sands, remember, in Captain Jack. Then when I was in my 80s, people said, we want you on the lecture circus. We want you to give us advice. Oh, could I give advice? 
So I'll give you some of my advice. First of all, I did not say to my daughters, marry for money. I said, when you fall in love, if there's two men that you equally love, if one brings you a chinchilla coat and the other one brings you flowers, you go with the chinchilla coat. And you always have your own money. You do not need to be a slave. You need a career. You need income on your own. And I always said to everyone, women have to look good morning, afternoon, and night. You never know who's around or what's going to happen. And men are attracted to you through your beauty, but you keep them through your brains. So keep that mind active and you must have a good disposition. If you are a bitch and a nag, they are not going to stay, even if you have the beauty and even if you have the brain. And you must never, ever drink to excess or to gamble that way either. And it's very important that your body looks really good. Now, you don't want muscles. So the sports that you involve yourself in are horseback riding and swimming and tennis and dance. Now, we all have flaws but we just kind of hide them or we don't show them or we don't emphasize them. But the most important thing is you are never too old to do anything new. New hairdo, new facelift, new career, new house, new husband, new lover. New is always good. Well, I died in my late 90s. I'm never sure because I wasn't certain when I was born and I never really wanted to look at my birth certificate. Unfortunately, Magda died before me. She was the most quiet. She did not want the spotlight and she died of respiratory problems. A month after I died, Ava died and she died of kidney failure. The story I love best about Ava is that when she was in a show, I would have someone take pictures of all of her costumes. I would choose one and I would replicate it. And on opening night, I would sit in the front row dressed exactly as she was on stage. Oh, she laughed about this. She loved this. And then, Zaza lived, oh my goodness, into her late 90s as well, also married to a cow. And she always said, oh, I'm the favorite daughter. And I said, no, you're not. But you did give me, oh, the love of my life. My one grandchild, Francesca Hilton. I only needed one wonderful grandchild. This daughter was so beautiful, so bright, so talented, and we did so much together. The happiest times of my life when I came most alive, when I was with my three daughters and my granddaughter. These are the times that I treasure the most, and many of them were in the quiet and seclusion of Ridgefield. And if there's anything you've gotten out of my talk today, I hope it's that you never ever say, I am too old to do that. You are never too old. Always try something new. Thank you.